Hey, this is Ash from All Things Dentistry. A place where we're passionate. About all those unwritten hints and tips of dentistry. Well, this is part two of our interview with Dr. Ali Nisei. So if you haven't seen part one, you got to check it out. And well, let's just jump into it. One of the things that I'm kind of complaining about now is, is I see manufacturers have caught on to this game that we play, which is just about the radiograph and radio opacity. And they keep pumping more and more zirconia into their cements. <laughs> They're literally just trying to fill the canal with a radio opacifier compared to something that is actually having some biological properties. So it's it's really not right. And that's something I teach at the school to our residents. And I say, you know, we really have to get off this nonsensical um, obsession with the radiographic look of cases and start to move back into understanding the biology of what we're trying to do, which is to eradicate those radiolucent stuff inside the tooth, which is bacteria, biofilm, antigenic substances, and things that cause inflammatory defects in the in the bone and the periapical area of the tooth. And when we don't do that, then we end up having manufacturers that start playing with our unreasonable likes of having just dense looking x-rays by giving us more zirconia, which does literally nothing for us. So, you know, I, I, I went, uh, my dental school was Northwestern University that was founded by G.V. Black. And if you remember, G.V. Black was the guy who coined these, you know, different forms, outline form, blah, 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 resistance form. And one of them was convenience form. And convenience form is the factor that facilitates your operations. And the minimally invasive people are hijacking the term, essentially calling us what, and I joke around, I say, what do you think we are maximally invasive? Everybody's trying to do the best that they can with removing as little dentin as possible. The question here is what price are we paying and what are we gaining? Research now is showing this contracted access preparations are not really gaining us any factor resistance to the same extent that they cause the inconvenience of creating longer procedure for the patient that has as a consequence a trade-off of potential TMD problems, anesthesia wearing off, inability to clean adequately underneath the pulp horns and the underside of the axis preparation, leaving microbes behind. And this is all in the research just showing like doing micro axis preparations for lower incisors. They managed to re reach the end of the route in the same way as the other people. But in the one case that was contracted axis preparations, they left a lot of bacteria behind. So, I mean, that's just like missing the point here. Um, we need to kind of go back to a point in which we can just use common sense ideas, not not obviously blow out the tooth unnecessarily. We want to keep things as small as possible. But the goal here is to maximize the efficiency of the work that we do as well, because the patient will benefit from it in multiple ways that I just mentioned. And um, it's always the competing world of people that want to kind of provide a reasonable answer where everybody's happy versus people that are trying to promote some new idea that sounds cool and uh, exciting, but I'm not sure if it does um, really benefit anyone at the end of the day, other than themselves. Hey Ash here, I'm so grateful you've been watching this video and I wanna take a second because I know what it's like to be, feel stuck down a canal, you can't get out of it, you actually have a problem finding canals, all of the above, and on top of it, you feel like you're alone. So I put together a course with a private Facebook group that will walk you through all the tens of hundreds of little tips that I've learned and, and figured out over the past couple decades of doing root canals. And as well, we have a private Facebook group which brings together clinicians like yourself. We all work together to better our game. So check us out at allthingsendo.ca. You won't be disappointed. Endo is hard enough as is. Oh yeah, oh my the gosh. The concept of making it harder is really, the way I see it is nothing more than a protectionist move. Oh, it, it should yeah. not be done that way. It should be It should be something that is accessible so that people everywhere can do it and feel good for saving their patient's teeth. To me, this is just sort of a bastardization of what is what endodontics is all about. Um, so I have never been for it. I just kind of, I could see through it, uh, but... It is the domain of many people that uh, like to uh, to just complicate simple matters. This video on this particular molar, first molar, as you can see, is is highly calcified and has a periapical lesion at the uh, parallel root. 
just kind of demonstrates that the system is robust enough that it could be used in more complicated molar cases as well. And now with the addition of that 20 in there, it's even more helpful. But this is just kind of showing this particular case is dealing with this first molar there. And you can see the tooth has a kind of a large radiolucency going on in there. And as when we do the axis, we can see the mesiobuccal joins, MB1 joins the MB2. And there's a little bit of a curvature. We start by an estimated working length. You know, in smaller cases, I would use smaller hand files, like a size six or something like that. And I also like the use of orifice openers in smaller cases, you know? You also can use other scout files if you prefer. The goal here is the smaller the case and the canal, the more you want to enlarge it a little bit more before you finish it up. So here on this case, we can see that on the paddle, we managed to put in the uh, 40 or four, but on the buckles, I ended up just preparing them to the primary, which is a 2506. And you can see here that after a lot of condensation, essentially, what well, we ended up having, condensing it down there, placing the, the liner in there. The idea was the idea that just showing that with this preparation shape, you are able to, with the smaller files, work your way with the system alone. And this is one in which the parallel route was used with two files, a 2506 went to the end, and then a 4004 was used to complete that. And on the buckles, I used an orifice opener, and then I used the uh, 25 that didn't go all the way down, but I then enlarged it a little bit with the um, uh, with the size 20, and I then decided that I'm going to drive the 25 all the way down to the end, and that's a 2506 shape, fill the access with the um, BC liner. You know, you are able to do more complicated cases with this technique as well. So I can't show this one yet because it's using actually a system um ash that we're going to launch next week at the greater new york dental meeting oh, yeah. this is actually um do a quick preview for your uh, users here which is called the total vac system but finally we're launching it and the idea of a total vac is to just kind of uh, for those people who used to like to use negative pressure um they have that option and now they could also use positive pressure as well but this is essentially the kit it's a very, um, it's actually super inexpensive. The main goal of this was to try to have people be able to use positive or negative pressure irrigation in their cases in a simple manner. And the idea here with this, and you Ash are seeing this before it's launched, it's actually gonna be launched next week. So this is a preview. <laughs> I'm not really supposed to show it, but, I, but I'm gonna show it to you. Well, so it's, it's, it allows the, um, you know, it starts with just having your high-speed evacuation. So you, it starts with this guy to do your high-speed evacuation inside the tooth. Let's say you're dealing with the tooth here. During the axis preparation, you do your high-speed evacuation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then all you need is this adapter, and the same thing turns into a surgical selection. Now you're able to do your surgical selection at the same time. So it uses one nozzle. Other thing that you can do then is now you have this negative pressure tubing that comes in like this is this guy and it divides into two heads and this guy can even go right on here you know or what you could do is you could separately put this into a separate suction nozzle so you can have these two next to each other like that right and what this does is it allows you to have two things number one it allows you to have very easy suction like this inside the tubes, which you could kind of shape any way you want in the axis preparation to dry and do whatever you want to do inside the tooth, right? And then what you could do also is it allows you to do this guy. So you can have your positive, uh, your irrigant in there and you can do single-handed irrigation because this is suction here that goes down right and this goes on top here and you irrigate and the excess is suctioned out back up the tube into the suction so you can this is this helps you get away without having to use an assistant yeah, to suction about that. <laughs> this is helpful for residency programs and dental schools the way i saw it and what's nice this is our shorter tip that you could use for the top but if you want to go deeper and do irrigation at a deeper level you even have this so you can switch to it 
longer needle like this. And unlike other systems, you're able to kind of use whatever you want with this. You put this in there and you bend it, right? And now you could do your, this is a close ended side vented needle. You can go inside the root like this, irrigate and suction at the same time. So this is what happens here. So you see, you can do your irrigation like this, and then it suctions the excess out. So this ends up being about 15 to 17 millimeters in terms of the length that it can go. And that's, I find to be kind of adequate, not too deep and not too shallow. Furthermore, what you have is, I wanted the system to be kind of um, open platform, open source in a sense. So it just uses a lure lock system. It doesn't use anything proprietary. So you don't have to get anything from our kit. You just need the basic stuff and you can have all the tubes that you have, whatever needle length or diameter on this one. See, it's just a very simple thing. You just put this on there. You could use this. You want to use a different tip. You want to use a thicker gauge, everything you could certainly do. Um, and this guy, it's great to dry at the end of the at the end of the day. You just put that in there. It goes down to the. It's fairly thin. And it goes down to here, in one little section. It dries out the canal, and you're ready to fill. Yeah, and I love it. It's uh, I you actually use. It looks very similar to a BC sealer tip. So that's what I use, especially in large canals, to clean out that apical portion with negative pressure. Right. So what do you use that on? What kind of a suction do you put that on? Well, funny you ask, uh, certainly not that really fancy gadget. I just stick it, stick it on the end of a surgical suction and it fits. However, right. the, problem, the problem is, is it's just ergonomics for my dental system and myself. Yes, that's exactly why I kind of, uh, because once, you know, you put something like, because you could put that on top of this as well like that, right? The problem I had with this is that it's like a little a lot of torque to kind of, you know, the hose handle is all yes. heavy and stuff in the back to do this and then to put it in the in the canal. It's way too large. Yeah. It's a, kind of I found out to be a little bit of a pain. So I figured having a nice flexible tubing like this that basically rests on the patient's chest, if you will. Well, what I do is I have a lead apron that I leave on the patient's chest. It'd be tell them that it's a um kind of a you know weighted blanket kind of a oh, deal they love you know? that so for, exactly right so we put yeah. that on the chest and then we put the apron on it and then if you leave little things like this it doesn't feel uncomfortable that you're like you know too close to their chest or touching and stuff so that weighted blanket that's just a lead apron and light lead apron yeah that will we have and then we put that in there so i'm doing my procedure i quickly take this out and i go in the canal and i dry it then i pick this up and i add the irrigation so it just becomes a little bit simpler way of uh, applying the stuff. So, mm -hmm. and then also what's nice about negative pressure is you can run a large volume of suction. So if you do, you can add your suction here, or you can add your irrigation here. This would be two-handed. Your assistant will be doing this. And then while you hold this and you put this down there, and now you have negative pressure, large volume of irrigant will go down this route and then up the suction. So I think it's, know, I, it's super inexpensive. It's actually, we decided to make this one this way on purpose so that it's just uh, it's for helping residents and things, the dentists that work in, in corporate situations in which they don't have assistance and whatever. That was the main goal. 